Tokyo, or Tokyo Metropolis, is the capital of Japan and one of the many prefectures of Japan. Tokyo is the largest metropolitan area in the world and is 845 square miles and has a population of approximately 9 million people. To put that into perspective, Los Angeles is 503 square miles and has a population of approximately 3.9 million people. In this video, we will provide you with the necessary information to help you overcome any culture shock you may encounter and inform you of the many business practices in Japan. Let's hear what a past participant had to say about the impact Tokyo has in our global economy. For example, it's one of the biggest, um, it's a big financial hub, and it also is very big on technology. Also, it's where the government offices are, where they can direct uh, trade throughout the world, because Japan is very big in consumer electronics and cars. You may also notice that Japan holds many characteristics of a high-context culture. This is a culture where context is often understood without using words and relies more on nonverbal codes in contrast to a low-context culture where people have a more direct approach. In the Japanese culture, part of being high-context is saving face, where avoiding shame is of the utmost importance. In the context of a Japanese business setting, part of saving face means making sure that a superior never feels embarrassed even if it means the employer suffers more. Saving face goes along with the Japanese belief in wa, or harmony. They believe in keeping wa in the workplace through relationships built by tatame, or a facade of pleasantries until it is strong enough for a person to show their true intentions or hone it. After living in Japan for four months, here's what a fellow student had to say about the cultural dimension of context in Japan. So within high context and low context, my experience was that Almost everyone I came in contact with was very amiable and very kind and friendly. And no one would ever, you know, as a Westerner or as an American, I'm sure we often did things against their cultural norms, and no one would ever come up and correct us. And if we ever did something that was maybe really out of place or that you know, definitely did not align with their culture and what they're used to, someone who already knew us, who was Japanese, would be you know, come up to us, approach us, and correct us, but very uh, tentatively be, you know, very subdued and act like it was a secret or something, that we were doing something impolite. So it goes back with the whole saving face, even though saving face wasn't very important to us because it was important to them, you know, they approached us within that cultural context. Going along with Japan's idea of wa is its strong collective culture. Collectivism is the belief in the power of the group one's loyalty to the group outweighs one's loyalty to themselves. Using Hofstede's cultural dimension theory, Japan has a mere scoring of 46 for individualism compared to the United States 91. In fact, losing face is when someone accepts praise for their individual work. There is a Japanese phrase that translates to, the nail that sticks up gets hammered down. The praise should go to the company or team, not the individual. Accepting individual praise would bring shame on oneself and ruin the wall of the workplace. So how does this translate into real-world application? In Japan, their business culture is very uh, collectivist, where you have to ask the boss, you have to do everything with the, your team. They're, everybody wears the same thing, everybody goes out and sings the same so company songs, and um, pretty much everybody is very interconnected, even between uh, the power differences. People within different power differences are still very connected. Like the bosses, they know their workers, they don't even fire for any workers in Japan. According to Hofst, Japan has a power distance rating of 54 out of 100. Power distance is how people see power in society being distributed among people in different hierarchical positions. With the score of 54, this means that Japan is a mildly hierarchical society. When you visit the businesses in Tokyo, you may find that the bosses sit in separate rooms than their employees and have much less interaction with them than you would typically see in the U.S. You may also find that when decisions are made, they are made on different hierarchical levels and must go to each level before a final decision is made. Therefore, it is much harder to challenge a superior than it is in the U.S. Let's see some concrete examples of power distance. Well, in Japan, they have a very hierarchical culture where everybody's trying to move up in a corporate ladder. It's very corporate there. Everybody dresses in black. Everybody has to bow to each other. Um, and you have to bow even lower if the person's even higher up in the company than you.
Due to their ancestral appreciation for Confucian philosophy and history as a whole, the Japanese view each life as a small portion of history itself, causing them to be very long-term oriented, with the Hofst rating of 80. This perspective causes many to focus on the longevity of projects and corporate businesses. With respect to corporate entities, the Japanese make it a point to focus more on research and development because it will help the company more in the long run, as opposed to the company making substantial gains in the short run. This cultural perspective allows the Japanese to strive to be the very best strong, that they can be in their short lifespan. Was the emphasis on Let's see what impact long-term orientation has so in business. A lot of the Japanese people that I was in contact with would be working very hard, and their reasoning was always for the future and to provide for their family, and they provided for their family in order for their kids to go to good school because they're really focused on what's going to come out in the future. And while I was there, there's actually a condition that's coming out where Japanese uh, individuals would work so hard that they'd literally kill themselves because of no sleep and lack of nutrition. So it's definitely a very long-term oriented culture from my experience. Uncertainty avoidance is when a culture does not like things that stray from the norm. Japan scores as one of the most uncertainty avoiding countries in the world. One reason for this has been attributed to the many natural disasters in Japan's history. Because of this high uncertainty avoidance, Japanese people often keep schedules similar each day. While traveling in Japan, there will be a lot of culture and tradition which may not make sense to you. These traditions, which the Japanese hold so tightly, have been established for hundreds of years. These small traditions can include the way food is served, the process of a meal, how people gather together, and taking off shoes when entering a building, as well as many more. Many of these traditions in Japan have been around so long because of the high uncertainty of voice, so which translates to into resistance to change. Oh, every weekend I was out, you know, going to different bars and restaurants, and I'd walk by the same ones, and there'd literally be the exact same crowd, the exact same people in there at the exact same times. So you come back a different time repetitively, and it'll be a completely different crowd. And also with the temples I went to, I would see the exact same groups of people every, let's say, Saturday, you know, noon to two, every single week. So they really kept a very strong a very firm schedule and never really deviated very much from that. On Hoff's dimensions, Japan scores as one of the most masculine countries in the world with a score of 95. Japan continues to hold to its strong traditional gender roles. The men are generally the main providers of, for the family, while the women will either stay at home or work in small businesses. The typical occupation of the working wife or mother is food service, as well as cleaning and running a small shop. These jobs are often held because they are able to do them with minimal support from the family while still bringing in some money. Women are more submissive in the home and defer to the man of the house. The man of the house holds the responsibility of making big decisions, looking out for family's best interests, and disciplining the children. Children are supposed to adhere to all guidance given to them by their father. It is very shameful if one of the children in the family openly disobeys their father. Outside of gender roles, masculinity can be seen in Japan through their strong sense of competition. Competition is the most prevalent in team settings. In this sense, they are able to maintain their culture of working toward the betterment of a group while still competing heavily. There is a great deal of team competition within companies as well whether it be between departments or between peer groups. Sports are another great example of team competition in Japan. Highly competitive sports date back through Japan's history to include different forms of martial arts, sumo wrestling, and even table tennis. Last, we would like to leave you with a few tips to make sure that you make the most out of your experience and have as little culture shock as possible. But the waitresses are very nice. They bow to you, which might be a culture shock to some. And also, be respectful of authority and be courteous when going out. And don't make too much of a scene.